I just thought that was appropriate. <sighs> I had some idiot on my channel ask me my Super Bowl prediction. I told him I quit watching the uh, National Football League after they disrespected our national anthem. And then I thought about it. I said, well, when was the last time we heard a children's choir sing the U.S. national anthem? What happened to patriotism? What happened to people around the United States uh, respecting our country? Just my thoughts on this. But uh, I, I wanted to make uh, one more video today because uh, this is this is a sum, summation of a paper by Mike Whitney. Mike Whitney. And uh, you might want to read this for yourself. But I tell you what, he's spot on. He's spot on everything. And, uh, and it blew my mind. And uh, he, he called out the, uh, the warmongering neocons and, of course, the entire Democrat warmongering party that's uh, taken us down. And I want you to look back in history on what the Democrats have done to the United States. Um, so let's just, and uh, by the way, the neocons, there are some uh, idiot Republicans that we have in the Senate, like Mitch McConnell. Uh, you know, we can't uh, count them out. But... Um, so what, what, what path have they taken us on that is, is basically destroying the United States? And I just kind of wanted to go through these items, and I thought, man, this guy, that's Mike Whitney. I, you know, you, you definitely got to look it up and read it, but I just want to summarize what he had to say. Was the first thing that he pointed out was that, you know, we had a total lack of preparedness to take on a nuclear superpower, which is basically what uh, NATO and these uh, idiot... Um, uh, Davos uh, lunatics, uh, the devils at Davos is what I call them, uh, or the uh, elite, or the uh, deep state, or whatever whatever name you have for them. Um, so, you know, if you're going to take on a nuclear superpower, you better be a bit, a little bit more prepared than, than what we are. Uh, you know, the second point that he pointed out, and I, and I agree with this, uh, you know, these idiots, they, they knew nothing about planning and preparation uh, for a sustained conflict. Okay, did you did you think that, you know, if you weren't going to sue for peace or if you weren't going to, after you provoked uh, Russia into a, 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 a confrontation, that, uh, that you were going to have the resources for a sustained conflict? Basically, uh, if, you, if this is what they wanted, which, by the way, we're going to get to another point later on, but I don't think that the American people, and I don't think that the... Uh, German people or any of the people around the world would have would have wanted to gear up all of their, uh, uh, you know, basically like we did in World War II. Everybody go to the factories. Everybody work, you know, 24 hours a day churning out uh, shells and everything to for uh, for the next war. Because I don't I don't think most people felt that we needed to go to war with Russia. But that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Um, and and the other thing, the third point was he he says the. They were surprised that the economic sanctions backfired. Well, how can you be? I mean, this is how stupid these people are. Oh, my goodness. How could you not know that the sanctions were going to backfire when you were putting them on a, a, a resource, you know, a commodity rich nation like Russia? And then, you know, the other thing was, OK, you know, NATO yeah, we, we're supposed to be all powerful West, and we have been, in, in, you know, taken on Libya or Iraq or, you know, uh, the, the, little, the little countries of the world. Not, not a superpower like Russia or China, for that matter. Um, but, yeah, they were surprised that the sanctions backfired. And, and what happened was, and just, I'm just trying to summarize everything for you so that you understand, most of the world ignores the sanctions. And, and what this did, it, it's even worse. Well, okay, so so what what this resulted in is is Russia is actually in a much stronger economic position than they were before this whole thing started, because uh, they're they're actually making record profits on their oil, uh, their Ukraine. I mean, you, you have to understand that they're one of the the largest uranium manufact or uh, producers in the world. So their their commodities are are, are they're selling at a premium now because the West uh, has all these sanctions on, and most of the world's going, oh wow, we can get them. A, a little bit cheaper now. Thank you, West. Uh, you know, you guys go go screw yourselves. Um, and so that, that's what I was saying. The other thing that they've done, and this is what's going to really hit us hard, is that uh, they did not see how most of the world would uh, ditch the dollar. Well, okay, so if you're going to violate international law and you're going to put sanctions on a major superpower, 
you know, and your little uh, Libya sitting over here, or your little uh, Colombia or whoever, Brazil or whatever, uh, and you think, wow, if we go up against the West, they'll just sanction the shit out of us and, uh, and, and crush our economy, which some of these economies would get crushed. Russia didn't, you know, that's the amazing thing. So now the whole world is ditching the dollar. Well, that's going to come home to roost, people, and I hope you're getting prepared because the dollar is going to zero. Um, I'm just telling you about uh, what the devils at Davos and the Democrat Party has done to the United States. And uh, I love these people that vote for the Democrats. I mean, I, I don't get it. They're the, the biggest warmongering party that, that, that has ever existed in, the, in, in my mind. I mean, I, I, good Lord. I mean, you know, everybody said, well, Ronald Reagan, we went into Grenada. Yeah, who cares, you know? And, and there was some heavy fighting there. Don't get me wrong. And there were guys that died. I don't, I don't belittle that little conflict but th th this is this is on a whole new scale okay and then um all right so so we talked about ditching the dollar well and the, the, here's another one okay the incompetence in the provision of weapons to ukraine okay uh yeah we've been we've been arming them up i guess they thought that ukraine had adequate weapons to take on a superpower Oh hell no! I mean, you gotta have you gotta have a magic. I mean, if if you're gonna arm Ukraine, you had to build an industry there that's gonna be able to manufacture weapons on a colossal scale, like Russia has. Uh, like I said, one thousand uh, uh, T90 tanks get more. Well, two my, was it two thousand? I think it was two thousand tanks. I don't know. It was in my last video, so you might want to look at that. And so now uh, we're going to Israel and trying to get Israel to give up its munitions that we've given them and ship them to Ukraine. And of course, they're talking about sending uh, Challenger tanks out of the UK and uh, the Leopard tanks out of Germany. None of this shit's going to do any good. You're, you're taking on a superpower. And unless you can just keep manufacturing, I, I, this is just, this is just um, stupidity. I mean, we need to start pursuing a peace option, but the uh, Biden administration has given the double barrel to Russia and said, screw you, the Democrats. The Democrats are telling Russia to go screw themselves, so we, we will not negotiate for peace. No peace, no peace. So, uh, so we started a war with a superpower without sufficient supplies is basically the, the summary of that. So this level of competence is beyond imagination, but when you got traitors like Milley, in Austin, in charge of the military, it doesn't, I mean, it perfectly makes sense. I mean, our military is led by traitors and incompetent uh, uh, military officers. Uh, that's all that I got to say after serving in the military for most of my life. So anyway, uh, that the, so the, the five things that he runs down, he says that, you know, it's amazing because the sanctions have backfired. We're, we're as NATO and, and Ukraine, we're running out of... Uh, weapons and ammo to supply to Ukraine, uh, and Russia is basically ramping up their supplies of weapons and ammo. Um, they did not, somehow they could not, the devils at Davos did not understand that the Russian economy would boom on oil, uranium, and other commodities. I already talked about that. Um, and they, how could they not know that the majority of the world is not for the war? Majority of the world maintain normal relations with Russia. That's why, you know, Russia's doing fine. They're trading with the rest of the world. And, and the rest of the world is not trading in dollars. They're trading in uh, uh, yuan and gold and, of course, the ruble. So, you know, what make of that what you will. I mean, this, this, they've basically driven off 85% 80, of the world from the Western economy. Uh, this is going to be big. It's going to come back to haunt us beyond anything that, that, that I can imagine. And then they, the, the other thing that was, was amazing to me, there was really no strategy, uh, when you look at it, to fight a major ground war in Eastern Europe. Think about what it took during World War II to fight a, a major ground war. And b by the way, uh, the Soviet Union uh, did most of the fighting uh, during World War II, if you did not understand that. That's basically Russia for, uh, to a certain extent. It's not the same. I mean, Russia is now an Orthodox Christian country. But, uh, but back then, uh, the Soviet Union took on the, the brunt of the fight against uh, um, uh, Germany. And, uh, and so now, you know, uh, you know we, we were completely unprepared to fight a major ground war. I mean, that, that's what this has become. So this, uh, this small group, 
uh, the devils at Davos, is what I want to call them, they think they know what's best for the world. And uh, if they had just consulted uh, their military professionals, and I don't count Milley and Austin in that category, but uh, you've got uh, General Flynn, uh, you've got uh, Colonel McGregor, there are a lot of good uh, military uh, officers that uh, they could have consulted before they went into this whole endeavor, uh, and they did not do it. And uh, I don't, I, you know, that's, that's, that. so they think they know what's best for the world. Uh, they think that uh, we need to get rid of our gas stoves and, and uh, get rid of uh, oil and everything else. Um, so they didn't, and also they didn't consult the public. So I'm curious, leave a comment below. How, how, how much are you for the uh, war in Ukraine? What does this have to do with you? Uh, don't you think that these billions and billions and billions of dollars that we're sending to Ukraine what might be better spent taking care of our homeless population or, um, or even uh, uh, feeding uh, Americans or maybe helping our farmers in some fashion or even securing the border? Because the Democrats, you know, they don't want to secure the border. An open border. I, they, uh, you know, two million people. How about uh, fighting the uh, war on crime, you know, the, the uh, gangs coming across or, or even uh, eliminate human trafficking? Uh, how about the, uh, the, the young women that are getting exploited uh, in brothels now all across the United States as the Democrats bring in uh, all of these uh, uh, illegal immigrants that are being exploited by the cartels? Uh, don't you think that'd be a better use for our money? If you're a Democrat, leave a comment below. I want to know your opinion. Uh, I, I, I guess you, well, you're probably a warmonger, and you just want to keep sending money to Ukraine uh, and support the devils in Davos. That's all I got to say. And uh, that's it for this video. I just thought, man, this guy, he really just summarized the whole <laughs> scenario. And I wanted this on the record. I wanted this video to be my opinion. I mean, because I agree with everything this guy had to say. His name's Mike Whitney, and uh, I, I tell you, he's spot on, spot on, spot on. Okay, uh, that's it. Peace out, stay free, and it's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of uh, Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious. Peace out. <clears throat>